start, and then if people come in, they come in, and if they, um, <laughs> and we'll, we'll catch them up, because you guys will know everything, and then you can fill them in, okay? <laughs> so, Dave, are you ready? Ready for what? Well, ready for introductions. Oh, how do you do? <laughs> can you tell them who you are? Yeah, of course. I'm Dave the Wombat. Does anybody know where Wombat lives? <laughs> Any of you sophisticated adults know? Australia. Very good, <laughs> Barbara. <laughs> you get a, a star by your name. <laughs> yes, Wombats are from Australia. And you will meet many other characters from Australia, but first, we're going to show you what's up here, and they're not from Australia. What? Do you want me to take over? If you would. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, we'll just put Dave here. He likes to look out the window, right, Dave? That's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, let me see. I'm going to talk a little bit about the monsters first. Why not start with the monsters? That monster is a parade monster with a long tongue and the teeth, and that was made by Mike Stasek, and he made a lot of puppets for me, too. You'll be seeing some more that he made. Mike also made these marionettes. We call them marionettes because they're on strings. But he didn't make those for performance. He made them just as art objects. What's this one? It's a dog. That's right. How about these guys? You recognize what they are? You might see them at the beach. The crab? That's right. And Mike has very special titles called these crab marionettes. And this one, a dog marionette. <laughs> and this one, I think it's just a monster face. Those monsters up there beside it are two mutant fish. They were for a show that I did called Trash World. And today is, anybody know what today is? It's kind of special, it has to do with Earth Day. <laughs> Good, Warren, star by your name. It's Earth Day. <laughs> and so, um, I did a show. Do you need to come down the stairs? No, I don't want to interfere with you. No, just that's fine. Okay. We're we're all in in uh, flux here. So. Yeah, um, that was a, a show about the environment called Trash World, and the, those creatures were operated by students, junior high students, and those rats that you see, they're also made by Mike, Mark, Mike, Stasek, and they were part of Trash World too. And Mike made those puppets, Birthday Cake Man and Sweeper Man. And then, let's stand up over here and look at this wall. Let's look at this wall. This is Martha Dana's puppets. She made, what do you think that little puppy guy you made? Yeah, Ruby, you might want to stand on the steps so you can see. Can everybody see over there? What's on the tree? Does anybody recognize what that animal is? It has pointy things on it. If you touched it, it would hurt. In fact, it might shoot those pointy things at you. And we have them around here. It's called a porcupine. And you always want to give the porcupines a wide berth. Never get close to a porcupine, absolutely never try to pat one. <laughs> Martha wears that tree like an apron, and then she operates the porcupine with one hand. She also made that chrysalis, the caterpillar, and the butterfly. So the chrysalis turns into a caterpillar, which turns into a butterfly. And those two big birds were made by Nancy Stanford and Peace Birds. And sometimes when you see peace marches, the, um, they'll fly birds like this. Nancy sold something. Peace Peace Alright, let's look at these up here. I'm going to put on this over my face. You know why? Because you won't be able to see my face too well, will you? You kind of see a shadow. And this is a on rock who style of puppetry. I'm dressed in black, I have a hood over my face, so if I were to operate the puppets, I'd 
I disappear in the background. And that's what Starbirds did to operate these puppets. They held on to them and so that they operated them in front of them and they, they moved behind the puppets. But you didn't notice after a while that there were puppeteers that you could see because they were all in black and they covered their faces. So you just noticed the puppets. And this is a story from um, a Native American tradition in the Northwest. Just feel free to come and meander down the stairs. We're doing a fun lesson. <laughs> it features Raven who brought daylight to the world. And the puppeteers went to Alaska and they, they performed for Inuits. And then they got collected stories and they brought back a story from Alaska. And all, they made all these puppets. All right, let's have Dave come down and show us what's down this way, shall we? Come on, everybody. We're going to look at some more puppets. Oh, for goodness sakes. Stick ladies. They're marionettes, Dave. Yeah, but they're made out of sticks. Well, that's because they're made out of found objects. What's that? It's an object that Mike Stasek found. What do you do? Fine, fine. How are you? Fine to do. Shoot. <laughs> People say this. I wish there were wombat girls that thought it was cute. <laughs> I'm sure there are. <coughs> yeah, but they're all in Australia. I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a story. What do you think, Dave? It's about frogs. Well, yes. What else? Oh, about beautiful women. Frogs and beautiful women? I think so. You're very pretty. That's right. It's a Tibetan story of, um, by Starbirds, it seems, called The Frog Magician, which is a variation on the frog prince. And look at this one. That puppet is part frog and part handsome man. <laughs> That's great. That's wonderful. Excuse me. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and this one, right behind you, that's a snake in a tree. It is, isn't it? Do you have a tree here because it's Earth Day? Absolutely. That's a, a tree that grows in the swamp where Br'er Rabbit lives. And this is bodacious, teeny, for trouble snake. And he's looking at, uh-oh, what's this? I think it's Pandora's box. It is. You know anything about Pandora's box? It's full of trouble. <laughs> yes, it is. Trouble escaped. It did. Yep. Can you tell what the, these troubles are? Uh-oh. Do you think other people can guess? Could you? <laughs> hmm. There's a big green hand. What do you think that is? Imitate it, Pat. Okay. If I do my hand like, what's it look like it's doing? Does it look like it's grabbing something? <laughs> if I wanted lots of money and gold and was grabbing, what would I be? Would I be greedy? Whoa, you're right. I would be greedy. So that big green hand means greed. <laughs> Good name. How did you change your voice? I don't know. <laughs> Just happened. <laughs> okay, we're looking at Pandora's box. Just join in. These are puppets, and they represent greed. And how about that one? How does that puppet look like he feels? Does he look happy? No. Yes, who said mad? That's right, he's anger. He, he represents anger, he's a mad puppet. And this is a kind of a hard one. This one is lies and deceit. Lies and deceit. And this could, well, I probably shouldn't touch it. That's okay, you can put me down, can I? No. All right. <laughs> 
So when we operated these, this would be lies and deceit. Lies and deceit. And this one is, he looks like he's going, huh? I don't know. So we call him ignorance. And this one is, uh, help, help, help. Does he look afraid? We call him fear. Fear. So it's greed. F -f -f fear. Ignorance. Anger. Lies. And deceit. And this one looks like Carol Channing. <laughs> but it's not. That's vanity, which I think is not a vice. I think that <laughs> vanity is a good thing. You just have to get to be over 50, and then you need it in order to get along in the world. OK, let's move right along here. Oh, what do we got here? Girls, do you re recognize these? I came to your house once. These are what? Fish this. That's right, from a show titled Fish Tales. And in that show, children like you held on to these and made the fishes swim. And they swam through all of these underwater little scenes. And on this side, we've got some dolphins for another show. He's got the gauntlet. Here he goes. <laughs> Day after the marathon. He's still into it. So this is our little fishy area. Anything you'd like to say? Any questions you, you want to ask? <laughs> yes? I wasn't going to say that because I don't have the rights to tell the story, but it does. <laughs> if I tell that in libraries and schools, it's okay. Yes, this is the story of rain, rainbow fish. This is rainbow fish. It gives them little scales away to these different fish. Miss Pat? Yes? I believe that's some fish you you like them all? Why do you like them all? Are they pretty colors? Is that what you like? Yes, they're very pretty. I like colors. All right, let's go see what else we have. Oh boy, does anybody recognize this story? I bet somebody can tell me what this story is. Very good. And who's that? Captain Cook. And who do you think that is? I have no clue. <laughs> You're very honest and smart, too. This is a pirate named Smee. And that show was done by Starbirds. And I, I took on the role for, um, it was a couple, a man and a wife, and she got pregnant. And she didn't want to do the show when she was really pregnant. So I filled in for her, and I played Captain Hook and Smee. And I had a fight with uh, Peter Pan, I believe Peter Pan won. But I really liked Smee because he danced. And um, when we, we can't do it right now because uh, we need the floor and the strings are broken. But um, when Anyway, so his little bees would go up and down and he'd tap on the floor. Kind of like that, right, Smee? That's right. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it. Oh, yeah, now I get into it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he was a good dancer. A little beat, but yep, I'll still rock out. So that's Smee. That was a fun show to do. In fact, doing Peter Pan led me to do the show that you will see puppets from when we go downstairs which is, takes us to Australia. Because I wanted to go to one place. I wanted to take the audience to one place. Oh my goodness. It's a big baby bird. And a small dinosaur. Well, it's kind of a big dinosaur. No, not as far as dinosaurs go. And there's the sun and the moon. And this is a Christmas scene. Anybody recognize who is in the sky? Santa Claus, Santa Claus. <laughs> hey Santa, the snow is melting. You better go back to the North Pole. Hurry up. That's moon too fast, doesn't it? Well, I guess we need a puppeteer to really make them move. 
These were made by my former partner, Nancy Sander. And that's a dancing dino. She wears that in front and puts those feet on her feet and then she dances with it. Same with that bird. Oh, you brought, you brought a little puppet, a marionette. What's his name? Pinocchio. <laughs> For goodness sakes. <laughs> Very good. Look at that. Pinocchio. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's dancing. Hey, Pinocchio. So you can you can walk with us, Pinocchio. All right. You put the marionette and touch get the hand puppet. Is that what you were doing? No, I'm a woman. Oh. <laughs> Good You're a good giggler. Later there, so I'll put a sticky part. We'll go directly 
and then to the third floor we'll make a stop, okay? Everybody comfortable with elevators? Yeah. All right, do the stairs go there too? No, no. This one you pretty much have to do the elevator. As far as I know, there probably is a stairway, but I, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's a witch from Russia. And this is a dancing stage, that's right. And she, um, the story of Baba Rock Yaga is that she... I see some shoes being under Well, yes, yeah, she... She had lived in a house that has chicken feet, and so it travels through the woods. So this represents Baba Yaga's house with chicken feet. And my friend um, Susan Ackley, who wore this, actually put those tights on, and she was the feet inside the chicken. <laughs> and, uh, and that's Baba Yaga's cat. And What's the Baba Yaga's cat's name? I don't know. It's not my show. I'm sure. The cat has a name, but I'm not sure what it is. Um, and those, this was a Russian Cinderella. And that was the Vasilisa, the Russian Cinderella, and one of the ugly stepsisters, and I guess the king and the queen. Not very happy. But um, it all came out well in the end. I have to know. And the, the, these are, this is uh, night, day, and dawn, I think. Mommy. All right, so what we have upstairs is we have on the fourth floor one set by Pontine, really beautiful puppets, that's really close to the elevator. So we can just go take a look at that quickly, and then we'll all get out on the third floor, and there's more Pontine puppets down the hall and some of my workshop puppets. Then we'll come down here, and we'll have a little puppet lesson, um, and I'll show you how to make puppets come to life, okay? So how many of us can fit up? The first stop is the fourth floor and then the third floor. And um, I understand that little puppet is named Pinocchio. <laughs> what's his story? Uh, the long nose? Yeah, what, what's that long nose about? He just is kind of a good looking, long nosed fella, huh? <laughs> Personally, I think long noses are kind of attractive. Step right up, everybody. This is all we see on this floor. What's his name? Oh, Dave the Wombat. You weren't here at the beginning, so yes, Dave. My name is Dave the Wombat. All right, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this. Pontine Theater makes. Um, beautiful stories and they use uh, puppets that are like this that just, they don't put their hand inside, they just manipulate them by holding them and just, remember I said that the Bon Raku puppeteers, they're in the back and after a while you don't notice them because you notice the puppet. That's the way these puppets move, they're kind of like dolls. And this is a set from It's a Wonderful Life, it's a Christmas story. This was made by Greg Gathers. He's a really good artist. So that's the only one we have here. We go on the third floor. We have uh, several other sets by Ponte, and then we've got my workshop puppets that I'm going to talk a little bit about. Then we're going to go down and we're going to try some puppets on and make them come to life. Okay? So, let's, unless somebody has some questions about this, we'll go to the floor, floor number three, and after that, down to number one where we'll end our tour. So they were behind and wearing black, so you couldn't see the puppeteers? Or? Actually, I think that in their case, they often take on character roles, and so that they're, they wear kind of neutral clothing, but then they will come out and they'll be characters, and so they switch off. It just, okay. you accept the premise after a while. Yeah. It does look like they're cooking. It looks like they're, these guys are cooks. They've got great big spoons to stir something up. Let's see what this says. The, uh, it's the Knave of Hearts, Cornish Castle. That's good. <laughs> I can't read it too well because I've got my contacts on. But it's from a show called Cornish Castles. Do you know anything about this show, Liz, in terms of so these are 
puppets of the style that you saw, except that they're carved a little bit more intricately. And they, they move around like dolls. Looks like they're having a, a good time at the castle eating, eating good food. Now we're going to walk down this hall. We're going to see a couple of more. A couple of more pontine sets, and then some workshop puppets. Follow me down this way first. feel just furry and cuddly. This is from Wallace Netting's Old America. The Tory Lover. Oh, Tory Lover. She has her reservations. Well, you should. Aren't they pretty and sophisticated? Oh boy, more very sophisticated Man and woman. This is from, oh, Voices from the Spirit Land. And I believe that these two puppets were actually made to represent Greg and Marguerite, who are actors in this story. <coughs> so I think that the actors acted out roles, and then they made puppets that acted out the same characters. I can't wrap my mind around that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's a hard concept. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you're just kind of a straightforward wombat. <laughs> <laughs> now these puppets on the walls, they all came from an original design puppet that I'm going to um, have you try out, which is a plain head and a plain body. And then um, I used these in schools and the kids would cut out all the features, which means the eyes, the mouth, nose, ears, paws, and spots, whatever, and glue them onto the plain body and head and make all these different characters from the same face. Recognize any of these animals? What's that one? Elephant. That's right. How about that one? Not reindeer. <laughs> Monkey? Yeah, this oh. is a water buffalo. Looks a lot <laughs> like a reindeer, though. How about the green one? Alligator. Yeah. That's right. Alligator, crocodile. And as we go up here, we have some woodland creatures that you find in the woods in New Hampshire, or Native American stories. And these are rainforest creatures that you find in a rainforest in South America. And then these are the examples of some of the plain puppets. Kevin, could you bring me that green bag right next to you? Can you tell me how these puppets feel? How does that one feel? Does he feel happy? No. He was angry. That's right. How about this one? Angry. Sad. Angry. Sad. Angry. Sad. What about Plain. that? Plain. Okay. How about this one? Happy. Happy. And what's what's different? You're really good at picking all that out. What what's different about these puppets? But they don't have any mouths or noses. But you thought that this one was angry, that one was sad, this one plain, and that one happy because of what's their eyes. Their eyes, that's right. The eyes are what tells the audience the most about a puppet. Really? That's right. Yeah. All you have is little beady yeah. eyes. <laughs> I know, the audience must not be able to tell much about me. <laughs> they can't really tell how you feel. Oh. <laughs> oh, I think you're feeling bad. I am. Well, what did I say? You said that they couldn't tell how I was feeling, and so that made me feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, cheer up. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> For the sake of contrast, it's, it's a beautiful sunny day. Okay, let me think of a happy thought. Oh, oh. Let's see. Baby bunny? No, that's not it. Baby wombats? Baby wombats. Oh yes, I love baby wombats. That's a good happy thought. Yes. So when you're when you're happy you get active. That's right. All I have to do is think of 
chubby little baby wombats <laughs> crawling underground. It's delightful, don't you think? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, it makes me want to go bring puppets to life. How about you? Yeah. Oh, right. Where's that green bag? <laughs> Pat will show you a little bit about what to expect, and then we'll go downstairs and we'll bring puppets to life. Bye-bye. In fact, I think it's done too soon. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to get when we're downstairs is a plain puppet. Oops. Some of them will have heads on kind of flat like that, and some of them will have heads on that are sticking out like that. But they won't have features. Well, you put your fingers in um, so that you can make them clap, and then you put two fingers in the head. So before we go down, why don't you just practice a puppet hand. Put your hand up like this, lower your fingers, and then see if you can put these two fingers together. Those are going to go in the head. If you're really little, we'll get another little puppet. And this is going to go, your thumb is going to go in one hand, and then these two can go in the other. It will actually be easier when you put the puppet on, but we'll practice. We'll practice all the way down in the elevator, and then we'll try it on the puppet. Okay? Ready? So let's go down to floor number one. Floor number one. Oh boy, back to the Australian puppets. Floor number one. Oh, you're good. What happened to your marionette? Where is Pinocchio? I gave him one. Oh. Circle so that everybody can see me a little bit bigger. Let's make a wider circle so I can all see you. Like a horseshoe. And parents, you can either sit down or stand, whatever is comfortable. And you can also be part of this puppet lesson, if you would like, I have enough puppets for everybody. Some of them are smaller than others, so I'm going to just take them out and see what works the best. Let's see. This one might be good for little hands, little tiny hands. One, two, these are pretty good size for medium. Thank you. You're welcome.
There is a front and a back. The uh, front is a little bit smaller. Some of the plain colored ones, it's harder to see, but if you look at the seams, you can see it's thinner. Barbara, I think you've got yours on backwards. Flip it around so that well, you're... I have it that way first. Yeah, like yeah. That. Okay. that should fit your hand better. Because the movement around the back of your hand um, is bigger, it's a broader area, so the front of the puppet is a little bit thinner. So, first thing we're going to do is practice putting the puppet on. Remember we had these two fingers that went up inside the head? So let's try putting the two fingers and then the thumb in one hand. And then the other two fingers should fit inside the other hand. Can everybody put this on? And if you have a little puppet, your puppet is the same on the front and the back. You just have to put two fingers in the head and a thumb on the other side. Let's see. Can maybe an adult help her with this to get a couple of fingers in there? Everybody, if you've got your puppet on, put it, put it up like this so I can see it. Okay. Wait, I want to see all the puppets up. Good. And I want you to wave to me with one hand. Look at my puppet and wave. Hello. Wave the hand. Yes, just the hand. I see the hand. Very good. All right, now we're going to try clapping the hands. You hold it up and you clap. Very good. Very good. We're doing a good job so far. Now, look at this puppet, and now we're going to be sad. What are we going to do if we're sad? That's right, we put our head down like that. Can you put your head down? And put our hands in our heads. That's right. So it's kind of like you're putting your head down and going, oh. And what you do when you're sad is you're hiding from the world. So you make it yourself smaller. Because, and then, sometimes if you're sad and you're shy, you might even turn away from it. So you turn into yourself. Um, now he's not only sad, he's shy. And that's it. Oh, he's feeling really bad. We've got to tell him something to cheer up. Maybe Wombat stood it for day. What else? What can we think that's going to be cheerful that we could say to make our puppies feel better? Hello. Have a very good day. Have a very good day? How about the sun is shining? Oh, okay. Okay. Puppets, don't be sad. You tell them, the sun is shining, say it real loud. The sun is shining. Oh boy! <laughs> Wake up the puppets, the sun is shining. All right, they're awake now, and they're happy, and they're showing they're happy by dancing. So, that's right, they're, they're dancing and jumping. And opening and closing their hands, like they're having a real good time. Whoopee! Yay! Whoa! And now... It's a nice town of sunny town. <laughs> it's sunny town. Now we're going to pretend that we're scaring them. Who can think of something kind of scary? What was it? A, a dinosaur. A dinosaur. Okay. So your puppet is, is happy. It's just playing. And a dinosaur is sneaking up. And when I say, rah, like a dinosaur, you're all going to jump back like you're scared, okay? So we're happy. The sun is shining. Everything's fine. But here comes the dinosaur. <laughs> okay, not only do they jump back, but they're so frightened that they're shaking. So one more time, I'm going to scare you, jump back and shake. <laughs> shake, 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 shake. Ah, okay, now... <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. The dinosaur was... Dinosaur. Yeah, we went to the dinosaur and we bought... Um, the dinosaur is actually extinct. You're okay. Feel more relaxed? Yeah. Good. So he said yes by nodding his head. Can you say yes by nodding your head? Yeah. Is everybody relaxed? Yeah. Good. So we've been frightened. Uh, we've been happy. We've been we sad be, and shy. We've been sad and shy. What other? It's kind of hard to show anger because anger is a stiff movement. Puppets, you know, it's, it's um, oh, are always stiff. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard to change their facial expression and, or have them make little fists. It's like this. What? This one. For anger? You think it is this? Oh, okay. So, yeah, it's kind of like... For anger. Yeah. Well, if you're... You know, if, if you... <laughs> I like that. That looks angry. <laughs> Pink and angry. <laughs> <laughs> if, if they stick their heads out like a bully, 
Then just, I'm angry. <laughs> angry. I'm so angry. <laughs> what else so are you so going to do? Yeah. <laughs>
feel so good. <laughs> 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 